Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Al Fadi, and I'd like to welcome you to uh, another show uh, from this brand new series, Let Us Reason. And uh, last time we talked, myself and uh, my dear brother Sam Shimon, about the fact that the spirit mentioned in the Quran, uh, using the Quran as the source, by the way, uh, proves to be a distinct person from Allah Himself, yet has divine prerogatives that belong to Allah alone. Right. And at the same time, we showed that the spirit appeared as a person indeed, in the case of Mary, for instance, in chapter 19. Today, we're going to continue our discussion and unpacking, the, uh, you know, basically what the Quran teaches about the spirit. And the reason why we're doing this is uh, for the mere fact that our Muslim friends believe in a doctrine known as the doctrine of Tawheed. In their mind, Tawheed means Allah is an absolute one, meaning one in essence and one in person. So far, it doesn't appear so. That's right. Sam, welcome. <clears throat> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ again. May the Lord Jesus be magnified by the power of the Holy Spirit through us. And again, I just want to emphasize one thing. A Muslim may be wondering, why are we trying to prove that the Quran does not teach Tawheed? Because we don't believe the Quran is the revelation of Allah. That is true. I mean, when I say That's Allah, very important. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and again, when I say Allah, because again, I am Semitic. I use a term for God. It's Allah, and you speak Arabic. So when you speak of the true God, you say Allah. I do not believe the Allah of the Quran is the true God of the Bible. Amen. <clears throat> and I don't believe the Quran is revelation. But the reason why I'm appealing to the Quran is for the benefit of Muslims. They believe in it. So if I was speaking to a Muslim, I'd say, since you believe in the Quran, let me show you what your scripture teaches about the nature of Allah. So that although we're going to establish that the Quran does not teach Tawheed, in fact, the Quran presents a trinity of sorts, Allah of the Quran and the trinity of the Quran is not the true God. It's a satanic counterfeit counterfeit trinity, a counterfeit God erected by Satan to mislead people from the true God revealed in Jesus Christ as documented in the Holy Bible, the only word that God has inspired and preserved for a dying and erring mankind. So I just want to be clear, we're appealing to the Quran for the benefit of Muslims. If I was talking to an atheist, I would never touch the Quran. But since Muslims believe in it, we're appealing to it. With that said, let's continue discussing what the Quran says about the spirit being co-creator and life giver with the Muslim deity. Because we mm -hmm. established the spirit is not identical to Allah. He's breathed out from Allah. He belongs to Allah. He's the messenger, apostle of Allah. So that shows a distinction. Though they're distinct and the spirit is subordinate to Allah, at the same time, the spirit does what only God can do. So let's look at chapter 66, verse 12, recalling in the previous episode, that when the Spirit appeared to Mary, he said, I've been sent to give to you, I have been sent to create life in you, to give to you a pure son. Now in 6612, we're actually told how the Spirit impregnated Mary. Correct. Because the Quran does affirm the virginal conception and birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. No Muslim can be a Muslim if he denies that Jesus was born to the Virgin Mary without sexual intercourse. If they deny it, they're no longer true Muslims, because they're denying the Quran. So at least the Quran here we say, right, you got it right here because it agrees with the Bible. Anytime the Quran agrees with the Bible, amen, it's right. When it disagrees with it, it's not the Word of God. But in 6612, notice what it says. Mary, daughter of Imran. And side note, there's a lot of you know meat to cover, a lot of topics. The Quran assumes that Jesus' maternal grandfather, his name was Imran, and it says that Mary's the daughter of Imran, and that Mary's mother is the wife of Imran, and that Mary's also the sister of Aaron, in chapter 19, verse 22. Now, why is that interesting? The only Mary whose father's name was Imran, who had a brother named Aaron, is the sister of Moses. Which is 1,300 <clears throat> years earlier. Yeah. At least. 13 to 1,400 years. Yeah. So here we have Jesus' mother identified as a sister of Moses. Because if you go to Numbers 26, 59, there we're told Amram, Imran being the Quranic equivalent of Amram. That's right. His wife, Yochebed, gave birth to Maryam, mm -hmm. which coincidentally is the Hebrew form of Maryam, which is the Arabic Mary, word for exactly. Jesus' mother. Maryam, and Aaron, Harun, and Musa, Moses. So the mother of Jesus in the Quran is none other than the sister of Moses. So should we just prove that she is also uh, pre-existent? You better believe she's quite old. She's been living for about 1,500 years by the time she... So Jesus is the nephew of Moses and Aaron. Now, with that said, notice it says, And Mary, the daughter of Imran, who guarded her chastity. 
not getting too graphic or too detailed, you and I both know that's not what the text says. That's right. It says right. she guarded her, and I'm going to give G-rated version, her private part. Farjaha. Right. Farj. Yeah, that's correct. It guarded her private part. And then it says we breathe into it, fihi, into what? Her private part of our spirit. So my question to you, why is the Quran telling me that Allah breathed his spirit into Mary's private part? For what purpose? To basically uh, bring <clears throat> Jesus uh, basically uh, into life. Yes. So you're saying that yeah. the reason why the spirit entered her body was to cause her to conceive Jesus? That's right. So basically the Quran is saying it's the spirit that created the human nature, the physical body of Christ? Now how can that be if the spirit is not God? Because Allah, and only Allah, according to the Quran, is creator and life giver. Yet here, again, we see Allah breathing the Spirit. Okay. That means the Spirit is not part of creation. It originates from Allah. It comes out of Allah. It proceeds forth from the very that, the essence of Allah, breathed out by Allah, entering into Mary's body, causing her to, to conceive life. What more evidence do the Muslims need to end up seeing that this spirit is not a creature. He's part of Allah, yep, so he's right. eternal. He can appear as a man, so he's a person. He's personal, he has personhood, creates and gives life. And we'll show uh, our friends right here. So for instance, look in the slide, who is speaking? And we, that's Allah speaking, breathe basically therein into the private part of our spirit, okay? Another distinction. And uh, that's what happened. The spirit of Allah, <coughs> basically representing Allah in this case, yes. is the one who uh, caused Mary to conceive. Yeah, there's no, there, there's no way of getting around the plain teachings of the Quran. And this is not the only time where it says that Allah breathed the spirit into Mary. The other passage, which we don't need to bring up on the screen, but it's in chapter 21, verse 91, where again she's called the daughter of Imran. Right? It says, again, Allah breathed into her. It says, the daughter of Imran, who guarded her private part, we breathe into her. Now, interestingly, there, the preposition is fiha, breathe into her. Right. Whereas here in 6612, it's fihi, breathe into him, or referring to the private part. But both these passages explicitly teach, Allah breathed his spirit into Mary to cause Mary to get, get pregnant with Jesus. Now, there is an alternate way of understanding these passages, but we'll do that in a future session. The fact remains that if a Muslim is going to follow what the Quran teaches, not what later Islamic theology teaches, that the spirit is Jibreel and Jibreel is a creature, if you just let the Quran speak, and ironically there's a famous Muslim apologist named Shabir Ali who's part of a show called Let the Quran Speak. So if we let the Quran speak, clearly the spirit is not a creature. The spirit is subject to Allah, subordinate to Allah, distinct from Allah, originates from Allah, so he's eternal, he's not, you know, not part of creation, and creates and gives life. What else do Muslims need to be convinced <clears throat> regarding the Spirit's divine identity, his divine personhood? Amen. And, um, you know, I really, it's, it's a deep topic. Um, I think we need to at least uh, uh, pause here yes. so we can continue in the next episode. And, um, you know, we want our uh, listeners, basically, and viewers uh, to go back to uh, uh, video number one and continue uh, so that you can see the logic that we are trying to establish for you so that this one will make sense even more based on that foundation that is being um, uh, laid out. But, I mean, I, I believe also every video at least has a powerful point in it. You know, for instance, this video... Uh, once again shows that uh, the spirit of Allah is distinct from Allah and has also the power uh, to cause life to come into existence. And in this case, of course, the conception of our, uh, the, the, the fleshly, uh, basically the body of our Lord into existence. So, Sam, what are we going to talk about next time? Lord willing, in the next uh, two sessions at least, we're going to discuss that the Holy Spirit possesses the very unique names of Allah, names that cannot be given to a creature, and prove that the Holy Spirit is not in a created angelic being. So that's Thank what you. we hope to accomplish by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hope.
hopefully everybody's enjoying this uh, Let Us Reason series. And uh, like I said, we're going to be calling this one Tawheed Dilemma. And obviously we're using the Quran because it's the foundation for what Muslims believe in. And we're showing him, let the Quran speak for itself, as uh, my brother mentioned here. And if the Quran is speaking for itself, it seems to me that the Quran really is not saying what our friends wanted to say. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also hit the bell so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sira International. And together we can introduce Muslims to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you.